Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the Republic of the Philippines. His Excellency, Benigno S. Aquino III. Ladies and gentlemen, you may now be seated. the sun and it is shining brightly over San Carlos City as we listen to the words of distinguished representatives of institutions that have made this solar power project possible. Ladies and gentlemen, the Chief Executive Officer of Aboitis Power, Mr. Eramon I. Aboitis. His Excellency President Benigno Aquino III, members of the cabinet, members of Congress, local government officials, guests from our host community, friends from media, honored guests, partners, customers, and colleagues, fellow team members in the Aboitis Group, Friends, ladies and gentlemen, and of course, Chris Aquino, good morning. On behalf of the Aboitis Group, it is my honor to welcome all of you to the inauguration of the 59 megawatts San Carlos Sun Power Power Plant, our first venture into solar energy. Saka Sun, as we call it, is one of the largest solar power projects in the Philippines today and is set to produce over 82 gigawatt hours of clean energy a year, enough to power 33,000 homes. It took us only seven months to build this facility and it is truly a team effort of more than 4,000 men and women who helped put it together alongside the strong support of the national government and of course, our host community, San Carlos City. 
Everyone's hard work and dedication to this project enabled us to complete the facility and start exporting power even before the March 15 enrollment deadline for the feed-in tariff for solar. Indeed, the global demand for renewable energy is growing remarkably, and the call for 100% renewable by 2050 is gaining momentum worldwide in the face of climate change. The Philippines is among the countries deemed most vulnerable to its dire effects, and this is why we see local RE investment gaining ground as well. Our national RE portfolio, which is at 32% of dependable capacity, is higher than the global energy mix of 23%. The Energy Department aims to triple RE capacity by 2030 under the National RE Plan, which reducing greenhouse gases towards our country's target of a reduction of 70% by the same year. These form part of the Philippines' INDC, or Intended Nationally Determined Contribution to the United Nations Framework Convention on climate change. While the Philippines accounts for only 0.3% of the global greenhouse gas, gas emission, Aboitis Power fully supports government's call to further reduce our carbon footprint. To ensure that we keep up with the growing demand and secure the country's energy mix target of a minimum of 30% renewable, we will continuously invest and develop more Cleanergy, our brand for clean and renewable energy, where and when it proves feasible. Aboitis Power is one of the country's largest producers of renewable energy, and our Cleanergy portfolio generates 1,263 megawatts, or close to 40% of the total net sellable capacity of our group. This represents our commitment to support the government's push for a balance of renewable and non-renewable power sources to address the country's increasing energy demand. Our other RE projects in the pipeline include SN Power's 8.5 megawatts Maris Canal Hydro Plant in Isabela, Headcore 68 megawatt Manolo for Teach Hydro Plant in Bukidnon, and ASEA Gas 8.8 .8 megawatt biomass power facility in Batangas. We have other RE projects in the pipeline, which include geothermal and biomass power plants. We are on track in achieving our goal to increase Aboitis Power's attributable generating capacity to 4,000 megawatts by 2020. Given our balanced mix of renewable and non-renewable energy sources, we are uniquely positioned to provide our customers with their choice of the right power solution that is reliable, reasonably priced, and has the least impact on our environment. This means we can address the power needs for base load, intermediate, and peaking loads, as well as ancillary services for grid stability and system management. Power supply in Mindanao, as we all he hear, continues to be a challenge due to the lack of capacity, the effects of El Nino, and the bombing of NGCP's transmission lines, as well as the repairs and maintenance of existing power plants. Therma South, our baseload plant in Davao, was fully commissioned last February, and is currently providing the much needed base load capacity to help ease the power shortage as it is not dependent on weather conditions and has paved the way for other private power producers to bring investments into Mindanao. For us, this strongly attests that EPIRA is indeed working and creating a more competitive market and at the same time, attracting investment in the power sector. 
as the threshold for contestability under open access is reduced from one megawatt to 750 kilowatt, we foresee a more dynamic and competitive market. At this point, we would like to thank you, Mr. President, for your leadership that exemplifies sustainable and inclusive growth through your administration's policies on good governance, transparency, and accountability. Dang Matuid has regained confidence in our country, attracting local and foreign investments and sustaining our upward economic growth trajectory. We also thank the various national government agencies led by the Secretary of Energy, um, Secretary Monsada of the DOE. Without your strong leadership and support, this project would not have come to fruition. Equally important is the support of the San Carlos city officials led by the mayor, Gerardo Valmayor. We are appreciative, sir, of your support, collaboration, and warm hospitality since we began work here. We look forward to working with you as we integrate into your community. To the other energy stakeholders, PEMC, Transco, NGCP, and of course ERC, thank you very much for your support also. Of course, we also thank our EPC contractor, NARI Group, our very supportive and accommodating creditor banks, our suppliers, our legal and technical advisors. Their support enabled us to move quickly to build this facility and meet the March 15 deadline. Last, but certainly not the least, we thank and congratulate our project development and execution teams, as well as our sales teams for their strong commitment tenacity, and hard work to see this project through. With all of your combined and continued support, your invaluable partnership, we will continue to provide a sustainable solution for our country's growing demand for power and to energize the dreams and hopes of our fellow Filipinos for a better future. On behalf of the Aboitis Group, Thank you all very much for joining us in today's momentous event, and hope you all have a good day. Thank you. Thank you very much, and a big hand for Mr. Eramon Aboitis. Please welcome the Governor of the Province of Negros Occidental, the Honorable Governor Alfredo G. Marañón. His Excellency President Benigno Aquino III, Honored Cabinet Members, Local Government Executives and Officials, Guests, Ms. Chris Aquino, Friends in the Media, our warmest welcome to the province of Negros Occidental, the emerging renewable energy capital of the Philippines today, and home to the largest solar farm in Southeast Asia. Not so long ago, Your Excellency, we had been talking about transforming Negros Occidental into a green economy. We took stock internally of our local resources available. After due diligence, we realized that on top, of course, of the vast tracts of land, the province is blessed with seven major river systems, which have an estimated capacity of about 200 megawatts. There are also existing geothermal power operation, both in occidental and oriental sides, and many other prospects like wind, biomass, plants, and waste to energy from sugar mills and other cogeneration activities. These are ex ex existing exciting times for our local economy. And the series of solar farm projects 
inaugurated most recently, has put Negros Occidental, specifically a Negros Island as a region on the world map. San Carlos City and its people are very fortunate for the Socasol 45 megawatt and the San Carlos biopower of uh, 19 uh, megawatt operations, which, which consistently provided not only revenues for host LGU, but more importantly, employment to the local workforce. The Cadiz Helio Solar Energy Corporation established the largest solar farm in Southeast Asia, which produces 132 megawatts. City Core Power set up in, shop in Silai City with a capacity of 25 megawatt, while Negros Island Solar Power is Isca Sol has a 32 megawatt solar farm in the Carlota City, another 48 megawatt installation in Manapla. Let me thank your Excellency, President Pinoy, for his continued support to the provincial government initiative. Not so many people know, and others may not even believe this, that the Aquino administration has infused billions upon billions of pesos to Negros Occidental in the form of social services, the bottom-up budgeting, farm-to-market roads, irrigation system here in San Carlos, we have three irrigation systems that is now operation, in operational. And other major infrastructure initiatives, these are, Mr. President, what you have done to our province. As I have echoed time and again, among the previous president, you have given the most to Negros Occidental. Even if we combine the projects of the past president, they cannot surpass what you have given to Negroses during your six years. And also, Mr. Abuites, thank you for your confidence in investing here in our province. And there are so many renewable places, like hydro. As I've said, there are seven major rivers ready to be tapped for renewable energy. And on behalf of the Negrinses, I sincerely thank for your generous spirit. And we can assure you that when you leave office in June 30, Negrinses will have so much to thank you for you have fulfilled your promise to the nation in 2010 of embracing the Madang Matuid transparency and accountability and the promotion of Bayang Mar Rangal. Good day and thank you and God bless. Thank you very much, the Honorable Governor Maranion. We now proceed to the briefing on the status of the Renewable Energy Program by the Department of Energy. Ladies and gentlemen, we have with us this morning the Honorable Secretary Zenaida Y. Monsada. Your Excellency, President Noy, members of the Cabinet, um, officials from the local government, uh, Congressman Umali, uh, colleagues from other colleagues from government, the abilities, uh, officials and staff, guests, Miss Chris, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning. Renewable energy has really been a program of government, especially with the passage of the renewable energy law. And with that, and because of that, uh, it was mentioned that we have our uh, share of renewable energy in the total uh, power generation installed capacity is now 34%. And this we want to be maintained even as the demand for power increases. The ratio or the share of the mix for renewable energy in the Visayas is actually higher than the country's average, which is 46.3% yun yung installed capacity in the Visayas. And um, for solar, well, it's really negros. That's uh, taking the lead with about 300 megawatts. So palakpakan natin ng negros. And thank you, Gob, for uh, the support. Now, um, Secretary Pitilia, my predecessor, um, issued among the latest uh, circulars that he issued was 
the mandate for a minimum 30% in the installed capacity mix uh, for uh, RE. So that provides for the guidelines. And because of the efforts of my predecessor again, uh, Secretary Rene Almendras and Secretary Petilia, kilala nyo? <laughs> uh, we are now, or the DOE is now monitoring about 700 RE projects. Marami, di ba? So, and we hope to have this increased with additional committed and indicative projects for RE. So, hindi lang actually coal. Marami ring RE and mas maraming projects. Kaya lang, hindi siya kasing laki in terms of capacities. But as mentioned, in Negros, you have the biggest solar farm, which is, doon naman sa kabila, but uh, this facility is among also the biggest in the country. Now, challenges for the um, for renewable energy, which at the moment is actually a little more expensive than the average uh, of the uh, power uh, generation sources. But it's because, isa, nagmura talaga ang oil. So, ang coal nagmura. So, so RE becomes uh, less competitive at the moment. But renewable energy is indigenous. Hindi natin kailangang i-import sariling atin. So, the thrust really is to go RE. And of course, it is cleaner. So eventually, with the improvements in technology, magiging mura na rin siya or magiging mas mura pa. Uh, solar, for example, when it was first introduced, ang rate na naririnig namin ay mga 22, 18, 17 pesos per kilowatt hour. But now, yung fit sa ngayon is 869 from a previous level of 968. Oh, diba? So... We hope na yung further ano pa, mga installations would be um, availing of the yung technology advancements so cheaper ang price. Now, um, para ma encourage other than the issuance of the uh, thirty percent uh, circular, we are also working now, and we hope that before June, we'll be able to release the guidelines on the RE portfolio standard. And that would require all distribution utilities to have a certain percentage of RE in their uh, mix. And the other thing is the green energy option, which also allows uh, direct users to, to choose to get RE. And kasama dyan, as a result ng EPIRA, is the uh, retail competition and open access which would allow big end users to buy directly. Hindi na kailangan dumaan pa dun sa big distribution utilities. And uh, among others, of course, existing na ngayon yung feed-in tariff, wherein may guaranteed rate ang uh, solar um, project developer. So solar, wind, run of river, hydro, at saka biomass, sila ngayon ay may feed-in tariff. And we are about to announce uh, yung result nga ng race natin for the 500 megawatts installation target. But of course, we are happy to note that many investors heeded the call for RE projects. Uh, many uh, joined the race for putting up uh, solar plants. So uh, we have asked, I, or I have directed the National Renewable Energy uh, Board to expedite the recommendation on what to do because we have about 300 megawatts na uh, solar capacity beyond sa 500 na installation target. Kasi we had about 800 megawatts na nakiki uh, paghabulan. No? So on what to do with this is something that we uh, wait for the NREB uh, recommendation because according to the law, they will provide the recommend policy recommendation to the Department of Energy. And also, para yung the ease of doing business, one of the complaints, or one of the difficulties for projects diba, in general, including RA projects, is yung uh, sabi nila mabagal yung processing, yung mga permits ang dami-dami. So we have this energy virtual one-shared system 
wherein we're working with the different agencies na nag-i-issue ng mga permits, licenses, endorsements. Uh, we have this tracking system wherein the investor can track, the government agency can track the developments of the project. So this will put pressure also on the different government agencies to, to um, expedite yung, uh, the release of the required uh, documents. And, um, well, I think most of you know that Negros, because of the, three, of the many, many uh, solar uh, plants that are put up in this area, nagkaroon tayo ng line congestion. No? So to avoid this, in our future um, installation targets for the FIT um, eligibility, we will be uh, going to uh, determine the regions or the locations para naman mag-guide yung investor na huwag naman silang pumunta sa isang lugar lang and then they would end up uh, having problems on the transmission. Um, also, our energy plan, we also want to uh, yung, uh, regionalize and even uh, there's also another batas kasi or regulation na uh, all power supply agreements have to go through competitive selection process. Now, para ang RE maging competitive, we plan to uh, categorize power plants, base load, mid merit, and peaking para ang competition will be dependent on the, the category. So there are a lot of things that have been uh, that umpisahan na. And of course, I'd like to thank Congressman O'Malley who has been very supportive in the efforts of the Department of Energy on uh, this energy program. Na sana tuloy-tuloy to, yung inumpisahan na matuloy. No? So we need everybody's help para hindi tayo kailang mag-umpisa uli sa, sa bottom. So um, with that, I wish to greet everyone. Good afternoon and thank you. A big hand for the Honorable Secretary Monsada. At this point, may we now invite our top executives to witness the launch and ceremonial switch on of the 59 megawatt Saka Sun solar power plant. Representing Aboitis Power, we have Chief Executive Officer Mr. Eramon Aboitis. Together with Chief Operating Officer and President of Aboitis Power Corporation, Mr. Antonio Moraza, whom we now call on stage. Representing the province of Negros Occidental, we have the Honorable Governor Alfredo Marañon. Representing the city of San Carlos, the Honorable Mayor Gerardo Valmayor Jr. And to represent the Department of Energy, we have the Honorable Secretary Zenaida Monsada. Also with us to witness the ceremony is Presidential Sister, Ms. Chris Aquino. Your Excellency, President Aquino, Honorable Secretary Monsada, Governor Marañon, Honorable Mayor Valmayor, valued partners and stakeholders, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen. This is the 59 megawatt Saka Sun solar power plant facility. We are, we are now about to switch it on by our top executives. On our cue, Mr. President, we switch on in three, two, yeah, yeah, yeah. one. the sun. Ladies and gentlemen, we have just witnessed the formal switch on ceremony on the 59 megawatt Saka Sun solar power plant. 
Thank you very much, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. We would like to thank Mr. Antonio Moraza, Mayor Gerardo Valmayor, Ms. Chris Aquino for witnessing the ceremony. At this point, we shall now call on a Saka Sun employee who shall give a testimony about her work here at Saka Sun. Please welcome a resident of Barangay Punao, San Carlos City. Let's all listen to Ms. Suzette P. Escorial. Magandang umaga sa ating lahat, lalo na sa ating mahal na Pangulong Binigno Aquino III, Ms. Chris. Ako po ay si Suzette Pasilan, 34 years old. Nakatira po ako sa Barangay Punao, San Carlos City. Ang aking asawa ay dating nagtatrabaho bilang isang security guard. Pero ngayon, hindi na siya nagtatrabaho sa, dito na siya nagtatrabaho sa Sakasan bilang isang safety crew. Meron kaming tatlong anak. Bago nagbukas itong solar na project ng Sakasan, nandoon ako sa Manila upang mag-apply sa Napa Abroad bilang Overseas Filipino Worker o OFW. Naisipan naming mag-asawa na mag-OFW na lamang sana upang makatulong sa aking pamilya at mga magulang. Kailangan namin ang extra income dahil lumalaki na ang aming mga anak at lumalaki na rin ang kanilang pangangailangan. Noong narinig ko na ang sakasan ay tumatanggap ng workers na mga babae, sinubukan kong mag-apply. Salamat at natanggap naman ako. Ang una kong naging trabaho ay isang pag-aasimbol ng mga bolts, washer at spacers. Eventually, naging personal protective equipment supervisor at shaker din ako. Sa ngayon, natapos ko ang construction na destino naman ako sa punch listing. Ibig sabihin, kasama ako sa mga workers na nanatili dito upang mag-aayos sa mga dapat up pang aayusin sa planta. Malaking tulong sa pamilya ang pagtatrabaho ko dito. Unang-una, hindi ako kailangan humilwalay sa pamilya upang makipagsapalaran sa labas ng bansa. Nanatiling kapiling ko ang aking pamilya at mga mahal sa buhay dito sa San Carlos City. At kahit pa paano, medyo natutugunan namin ang aming basic needs. Maliban sa pagkakataon na katrabaho ako dito, naging proud din ako sa aking sarili dahil ako ay isang babae. Subalit nagkatrabaho sa isang institusyon na tumutugon sa problema sa kakaunlaran ng kuryente at nadudulot sa kaunlaran ng aming lugar. Dahil dito, nagpapasalamat ako sa Sakasan dahil sa pagkakataong pagkatrabaho sa kanila at kay Pangulong Aquino dahil sa kanyang suporta proyektong katulad nito. Ang pangarap ko ay sana magtuloy-tuloy ako sa trabaho ko dito sa Sakasan. Sana ang susunod na presidente, ganito din ang gagawin. Ang suportahan ang proyektong nagbibigay hanap buhay, lalo na sa mga kababaihan. At ingganyuhin ng mga potensyal investor nito. Maraming salamat po. Thank you very much, Ms. Suzette Escorial. At this point, we give the floor to another resident who shall give a testimony, this time as a beneficiary of the DSWD Sustainable Livelihood Program. From Barangay 3, San Carlos City, here is Ms. Leia L. Aguado. Maayong buntag sa atong tanan. Masaya ako at andito ngayon ang ating mahal na Pangulong Binigno Aquino III. Uunahin ko ang pagsasabi sa 
nagpapasalamat sa kanya dahil sa dalawang programang pangmahirap na pinagkaloob sa amin ng gobyerno, ang Pantawid Pamilyang Pilipino Program o For Peace, at ang Sustainable Livelihood Program o SLP. Ako po ay si Lia Layagon Aguado, 40 years old at residente ng Barangay 3, San Carlos City. Nakilala ako sa aming lugar bilang isang mananahi. At yung asawa ko naman pong si Roni ay isang construction worker. Hindi kami fixed income earner. Nagkaka-income lang kami kapag may nagpaparepair ng damit sa akin. At kapag dinatawag si Roni para sa pagpagawang pakyaw sa construction. Kung wala siyang pakyaw, nag siya sa pagdadrive ng pedicab. Anim ang anak namin. May edad na 20, 18, 17, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 
Maski may pondo sila, sa pag natanong ko ng ganun, sasabihin sa akin, o oh, nga, wala kami pondo bago sa inyo dagdagan. <laughs> no? Kaya if may partner ka tulad ni Manong Freddy, na talagang nagtutulungan kayo, eh talaga malayo ho nararating. Kaya kung pwede ho, palakpakan natin si Manong Freddy. At uh, baka raw ho, ito last term na raw ho niya, pagkatapos po noon, eh sasamahan na niya ako mag-ikot ng Pilipinas after, uh, sa 19, uh, 2019. <laughs> Anyway, the Philippines has undergone a dramatic turnaround. From 2010 to 2015, our growth average was at 6.2 percent for the GDP, the fastest pace since the 1970s, which we all know was a period of crony capitalism in the Philippines, and therefore not comparable to the economic growth we have now. Now, wherever we look, we can witness proof of this trend. One only needs to open the Sunday newspaper to the classified ad section to see all the workers needed by companies in the Philippines. Might I add, these are not simply menial jobs. Companies are looking for skilled workers, and amongst them engineers, needed on an immediate hiring basis. Indeed, during our time in office, we are surprised at the revival of manufacturing, with more companies setting up shop. These include the production of complex items such as automobile, automobile parts and aircraft components, aortic catheters, smart electronic toothbrushes, and many other complicated technological equipment. The vibrancy can be seen here in Visayas as well. Yesterday, in Bacolod, I was surprised. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm repeating myself. We ate at a restaurant called Entings in the marketplace, or in a venue called Marketplace. The venue, I was told, was less than a year old, the food, as always, was excellent, and there were so many people entertaining themselves and eating at this particular complex. I have been to Bacolod several times, but even as I, even I was surprised at the growth of business as demonstrated by these new entertainment venues. Even from the airport, one could hardly recognize the transformation of your province. At some point, certain portions made me feel like I was actually in the Bonifacio Global City. Last year, we inaugurated the Negros First Cyber Center. To put it, put it politely, it seemed as if they had acquired a dream location. Governor Marañon tells me that now the locators are saying they need a second building already. There are more establishments now, so much so that it has reached the point where the city is worried about not having enough workers to maintain their growth momentum. Initially, at the construction phases, but then down the line for putting in all of these workers in the establishments being established. I mention all of these because our progress hinges greatly on having enough energy. These days, electrical power is so essential to both our economy and to modern life. It facilitates commerce, helps us connect with our loved ones, and grants us the ability to maximize the number of hours in our days. Clearly, we recognize its immense value which is also why we have been hard at work to bring electricity to every corner of the Philippines, particularly through our CTO electrification program. Before we took office, every Filipino was told that all the barangays in the country had already been energized. Sometime in 2011, I was told that the definition then was that if any portion of a barangay was connected to the national grid, then they said that the entire barangay had already been energized. It turns out, however, during an inventory of sitios in 2011, this was not the case. We found out that 32,441 sitios remained without power. I am proud to announce that as of March this year, through the combined efforts of Secretary General Almendras, Ikot Petilla, and now Naidi Monsada, we have cleared that backlog. Thanks to the hard work of the men and women of the Department of Energy and the National Electrification Administration, there are still some remote sitios that will be energized by means of renewable energy, given the impracticality of attaching them to the national grid. We target to complete those by the end of June this year. Of course, as our nation moves forward, the challenge is to have enough reasonably priced, dependable power supplies, balancing the goals of fulfilling the growth potential of our country, uplifting the lives of our countrymen, and protecting our environment. I am proud to say that through the able leadership in the Department of Energy, we have risen to this challenge. Over the course of our term, we have commissioned a total of 3,262 megawatts in installed capacity in 70 power plants, 38 of which, or better than 50%, are renewable. For Visayas specifically, we were able to increase the region's dependable capacity 
by more than 900 megawatts, from around 1,300 megawatts in 2010 to 2,228 megawatts at present. There is another 5,404 megawatts in the pipeline through 60 incoming committed projects, 42 of which are renewable. Indeed, one can really see our commitment to mitigating climate change, especially since the percentage of renewables in our energy mix has remained relatively high. At 33.9%, not to mention, while we are still exploring how to minimize prices and ease the burden of our people, the cost of energy has stayed at a reasonable level. The solar plant we are inaugurating today is certainly a step in the right direction. It is yet another reason for us to be optimistic and confident about the future. I am told that this plant will help avoid 72,000 metric tons of carbon dioxide emissions per year. And this is apart from the basic benefits of such a project. While we have a current energy surplus in Visayas, it is imperative for us to react and prepare for future economic growth. And this plant offers an estimated additional 59 megawatts of capacity to the ever-growing Visayas region. I'm also told that since the Visayas and Luzon grids have already been interconnected, these grids can be improved and can easily source from each other should there be a shortage in supply. There is likewise a Boitis 68 megawatt run of the river power plant in Bukidnon, which is also expected to start commercial operations this year. Indeed, for your confidence in our people and our nation, your companies have my gratitude as well as that of the Filipino people. It is such a welcome development to see that solar is becoming more prevalent and affordable, and our administration's hope is that even more companies follow in your footsteps. This hope is reflected in how we have helped pave the way for you to invest here, in the form of competitive economic incentives. Investors in renewable energy uh, development receive a seven-year income tax holiday, 10-year duty-free importation of renewable energy, machinery, and feed-in tariff rates, amongst many others. Of course, Congressman Omali is here, chair of the Energy Committee in the House. If there are other concerns, he is the person to talk to to amend the necessary laws. <laughs> Through such measures, we are confident that with the growing number of believers from the private sector, we can truly achieve our goal of increasing our renewable energy base capacity to 15,304 megawatts by 2030. And I'm certain that as we welcome even more advances in the renewables, we can minimize our reliance on fossil fuels, increase the share of renewables, all without jeopardizing the price structure. Ladies and gentlemen, I only have 72 days remaining in office, and I will certainly miss attending landmark inaugurations such as this one. Rest assured, however, that I am no less optimistic about our future as a nation, because we have reliable, well-meaning partners in you. And more importantly, because I am confident that our people will not let our gains go to waste and will choose to continue treading the straight path. I am hopeful that even as I step down, Aboitis can remain the consistent partner and continue its trend of working with government, investing in the Filipino, and helping shape a better future for mankind. And I am likewise hopeful that our productive partnership can set an enduring framework by which sectors, public and private, converge to build a nation that we can be proud to bequeath to the next generation. Thank you. Good day. Thank you very much, His Excellency President Aquino. Ladies and gentlemen, we have just concluded this morning's switch on ceremony of the Saka Sun 59 megawatt power plant. We thank all our distinguished guests of honor and stakeholders for joining us this morning. May we request everyone to remain in their places.